So right from the get-go, if you realtor know that your people places and that your client is processed, make sure that you have some sort of process for them to follow and they'll make your sales go faster, more smooth. And that's what you want, really. Hi, I'm Maud Leger, and this is the Realtors Conspiracy Podcast, where we crack the code to real estate success. Learn from top realtors, entrepreneurs, and innovators about how to grow your business as we discuss real estate success stories, mindset, processes, motivations, and the key to their success. Check out our podcast episodes every Monday to crack the code to success for your real estate business. Welcome to our part one of our mini series with Tree Ride, our human behavior expert. Today, we are helping realtors learn about themselves and how they can align their strengths to grow their business. This week, Tree is sharing tips on how to build on your self-awareness as a realtor to truly owning on your skills and your strengths. So whether you are a people, places, task, or processes realtor, there's a lot for you to learn on today and to grow yourself. Let's get to my chat with Tree. Hi Tree, thanks for joining us on the episode again today. We did an episode a few weeks back and a lot of people are asking questions and to want to have more information about what you discuss. And one of the things that comes up is for real estate agents talking about people, places, tasks, and processes. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, actually, thanks for having me, Mode. first and foremost. It's great to be here um, again. And so, yeah, this is actually extremely important for, well, everybody, but especially for real estate agents in terms of how they are running their business, how they're engaging with people, um, or even maybe perhaps some things that they possibly could be missing too. So with this information, they could actually find out perhaps what it is that they're missing or, or maybe even giving themselves feedback on what it is, right? So we all know us as human beings, there's no such thing as failure. There's only feedback. So through feedback and through learning some more things, you know, it's growing your business, right? Just like what your shirt says as I'm reading it, grow your business. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So when we talk about people, places, tasks, and processes, right, we as human beings, we generally have two of these as our drivers, right? So let's give an example. So first I'll say pros and cons for each one. So pros and cons for people. Okay. The pros, right? That's like nice to be around people, nice to connect with other human beings. Us as human beings, we, we enjoy connecting with other people right? Getting energy from being around people, wanting to socialize. You got it 100%, right? And that's a good thing. But if that's your driver and you need to be around people in order to get things done, it's good to know that because then you can actually, if, if you're procrastinating about something, then you can be like, oh, okay, I need to inject people into what's happening but also too you want to have a nice balance so that you have um like it, it would be a con if you just sort of sat around and didn't do anything about it right like if you didn't know that that was your driver and now you all know this if you're a people person right then you can actually use that as a porthole or an outlet or a bridge or gap to get you to where you need to go right so making sure, hey, you people, you people persons out there, making sure if that's your driver, if you need to be around people to get things done, then just make it happen and do it, right? So the second one is plate is places, right? So the second one is places. And um, so places, it means that people get excited by being and exploring and being curious around different places. So a lot of realtors would probably fall into this category or would want to kind of lean in that direction because they're they're selling places. Going homes, uh, from homes to homes, viewings, going to different neighborhoods, trying to learn more about what the schools are in that area, what, like all of that, that's a places. Yeah, 1 million percent. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So as people are exploring that, the pros are that your eyeballs get to look at something different all the time, which is us as humans. It's a good thing, right? We're mm -hmm. meant to, we are very much meant to 
not look at the same thing all the time, which is unfortunate now in like our computer stage, right? You're <laughs> just looking at a computer screen. So if you are a places person, you want to make sure that if you are on your computer a lot, that you are doing it in different places, mm-hmm. rather, even if it's in different places of your own home, it'll, it'll help you getting, get out of procrastination and help you actually get things done. Okay. So if you're feeling frustrated and you're in one place, and you're a places person, move and re resituate yourself into a new place, right? Yeah. So the pro, it's great. Your eyeballs are looking at something, but con, if your job is forcing you to be in one place, find a way to even make it different, right? So, so if you can't, if you're stuck at your desk and that's it, maybe redecorating or making the place even different, okay? I can see how realtors would be people and places a lot Mm -hmm. dealing with people going places all of that so let's talk about the task and processes yeah so so those are actually as you mentioned mode absolutely those are what realtors want to be good at right because they they're they're selling places to people (laughs) right so obviously so the other two so three and four that is tasks and processes. So tasks, the, the pros is, is, Hey, you're organized. You know what you got to do. There is that pathway of, of, of things that have to be done. Right. But if you are all people places, you're going to be procrastinating on your tasks. Right. So the pros is that you're organized. Um, if it's not, then you need to make sure that you're in people and places to get your tasks done. Okay. okay. So, so if you're, if you're a realtor out there and you're totally people places, bring people with you or go to places to get your tasks done. Okay. okay. It's going to, it's going to help you. Yeah. Um, the last one is processes. So processes is literally the process and it's interesting. So even for me, that's like the furthest one out of my comfort zone. So even to explain it, I'm stuttering through. So just (laughs) notice that. Yeah. And that's with every human being, it's hard to explain things that you're not right. So for processes, it's very, um, a little bit more rigid. It's, it's safe, right? So it's safe. It's secure. Um, and people that, um, the pros is that, say you ask somebody that is process oriented direction somewhere guaranteed you're going to get really good directions okay if you ask a people person for directions they're going to tell you about the experiences that they had to get there and you're going to be all confused okay so noticing how this works and how people's um communication with the world around them and how they interact and all of these things right so So yeah, so processes are good. If say a realtor had a client and they're process oriented, you as the realtor want to make sure that they have the process. Otherwise, they're not going to feel safe to buy the property. There's and it's and it's not even going to be like a mental thing. It's going to be in the nervous system that they're going to be like, whoa, they need more information. Yeah, I find that a lot. Like a lot of realtors are people, places, struggling with tasks and processes. So they are seeking information. How do I get more task oriented? How do I set processes? Where do I look for? So what would you say to a realtor who's looking for more information on that? Yeah, so you can, it can be taught. So even in, for me, I'm very much people, places. And I had to, I had to really teach myself in terms of tasks. Um, or if I, if I'm looking for an assistant, like an assistant that I would have, right, definitely has to be process and task oriented. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So that there's a nice balance, right? So realtors out there, if you have an assistant, or if you're looking for an assistant, that's one way to do it is to ask for help, right? To ask, like, so for example, if you're super dependent, super independent as a realtor, you want to look, you want to be okay to be dependent on somebody else to do that, right? And, or if you want to do it yourself, fantasize your, like to get the process of anything. So this is how I do it. Right. So notice how I'm struggling too, because it's something that I work at. And so I fantasize through, like I close my eyes, I fantasize through and be like, okay, step one. So if you think about making a sandwich, okay. And I'm fantasizing through step one, go to fridge and get bread. Okay. Yeah. My gluten-free bread's in the fridge or freezer. 
right? So that'd be step one. So as your fantasy, step two, take, take said bread out of fridge, put on counter, right? So you're literally breaking down. And even if you're looking at the process and say, I went from, you know, go to fridge, get bread to butter bread. I want to look back at that and say, okay, how does the bread get to where I'm buttering it? Mm. Okay. So you're, you're sort of fantasizing through the process and so I'd encourage any realtor to fantasize through the process because you know the process. You've sold tons of houses, but the person, it might be first time home buyer, it might even be second, third, fourth, but it might be 10, 15 years in between buying a house. I mean, we don't do it every year. Yeah. Most of us, anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you want to just assume that everyone's a first time home buyer um, and that, you know, okay, what is that process? Mm-hmm. Or if, if they, a good way too for a realtor to tell if their client is a people place as well, and they're not worried about that, if, if the realtor is people places and their client is people places, there is like an awesome connection there. And, yeah. and I'm sure people listening to this right now know those clients that they had an instant connection with. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. That's very true. And then, so I guess something you mentioned too, it's struggling for someone to do all four. So when you're building a team, try to build a team using skills that you don't have, that your admin assistant could have, creating processes, keeping you on track with the task, like do the open house, go do this, do that, do this. So I think it's important what you said to just nurture it on someone else. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We all can't do it all. That's impossible. Right. Maybe we'd have two extra arms if that was the case. Right. Yeah. But so let's look at another uh, version of this. So say a realtor was a task and place person. Okay. Right. Then they want to hire somebody that's a people person. Right. The point of the point of contact, like, hey, yeah, so so and so is going to meet you at blah, blah, blah. Right. So at least you're getting you're you're covering all angles. Yeah, yeah. That person could tell them what the tasks are being done by the realtor being very task oriented. Absolutely. Right. So it's all about communication. Right. And sometimes if you're um, too much, say, people places and then you're just assuming that, you know, that people know what you're not know what you're thinking, but just there's more assumptions from that. Okay. Whereas people that are more tasks and, and process oriented, they're more literal. They're more like kind of clear in terms of the process. Yeah. Right. So, and people feel safe under different circumstances, right? So as, as you know, being a realtor, you have all kinds of different clients, right? All kinds. So being more aware of what your client is as well, yeah. then that's going to help you communicate in their language there because buying a house is a big thing and you want them to feel safe and secure. And if they're and it's, it's in their nervous system, right? So if, if the realtor is not a people person and the client is, then there has to, they have to be getting that comfort from somewhere. Or if the client is process and the realtor is not, they need safety in the process. Otherwise they're, they're, it's going to take forever to get them to either put an offer on a house or, you know, so right from the get-go, if you realtor know that your people places and that your client is process, make sure that you have some sort of process for them to follow and they'll make your sales go uh, faster and more smooth. And that's what you want, really. Yeah, that's amazing. That's such a great topic for realtors because yeah, instead of being all over the place or trying to catch up, to just being aware, like how do you uh, guide people on getting this awareness for themselves? Through curiosity. I mean, through curiosity, if you're just listening to your client, you know, give them space to talk, right? Sometimes when, um, if you as a realtor, if you're too eager or you're too much of a people person trying to make that connection too much, then you want to know that about yourself. So it's a self-awareness, like being curious of your own behavior, self-awareness, and, and just taking that step back to allow this client to present themselves, to present their um, common tendencies, right? Or as a, as a realtor, you can even explicitly ask them like, hey, you know, are you a process or task person? 
or, or they know right away if they're whatever you are. Right. So even if, if say the realtor was a process person and they get a process client, there's going to be an instant connection. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll know when there's an instant connection and realtors right now, listening to this, you're probably nodding your head, just like Modis and be like, yeah, yeah, I know the, you know, the ones, the people that you connect with those clients, you remember the ones you don't remember is perhaps the ones you didn't connect with. Um, or, or giving yourself feedback as a realtor and being like, Oh, huh. I lost that client. Maybe there was that disconnect. Right. So, so getting, getting that connection from this type of way will definitely help you. Yeah, working on that awareness. Go back and think which client was successful, not, and why, and what happened. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you. A lot of people were asking to have you, so we're doing a part three mini-series episodes. Uh, today was people, places, task processes, and then uh, next coming week would be how to deal with clients. So good one for realtors to stay on for next week. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for joining. Subscribe to our podcast, Realtors Conspiracy, today. And tune in next week as we continue this mini-series with our human behavior expert. Mm -hmm.